All right, programmers, let's continue walking through the conditionals exercise. So in the last one, what we did was go over sections zero and one, and now I want to level up and work on section two, right? So these will be some pretty involved conditionals, as you can see. So what I'll do is I'll create a nice file for myself. And what we want to do is predict what happens in this big chunk of code. Looking at snippet 2.1, let me take a lay of the land, right? So there's a lot of code here, but what I want to do at the start is just see the big picture. So the first thing I'll notice is I have two conditional chains, or I have this chain and this separate chain, right? So two chains overall, and how do I identify those so quickly? Well, a chain just begins with a regular if statement, right? So what I'll do is I'll probably run one conditional from each of these chains, right? Especially because it terminates in an else. And so now let's start evaluating this code top down. Looks like we have a string saved to a variable called nonsense, and then we have another variable called has okay, and it actually gets its value from uh, that nonsense string through this expression. So I evaluate this top down, and so they're checking nonsense.index of okay. And I know that that part of the expression would just evaluate to the index where I can find okay inside of this string. And maybe you can even see the pattern here, right? Probably telling from the variable name. Uh, can I find OK within the nonsense string? And I can. Right there is one instance of OK, right, inside of the poke string. And since it is found, I know that this index of will give me the actual index where I can find it. And I know that that index must be a number greater than negative 1 because it was actually found. So overall, this expression would evaluate to true because it's basically just checking, does the nonsense string contain OK? So this will be true. And then I would check this condition, if true. And I know immediately because the condition is true, I would enter this branch. And so I should just print out yeet over here. And because I've just chosen a branch in this chain, I actually don't bother with these other two branches, right? So I just print out yeet from this first chain. And then looking at the rest of the code, I keep going top down, have some other expressions, has zoo. It has a very similar pattern. In other words, overall it checks, is zoo found inside of the nonsense string? And it's actually not, right? I don't find zoo in here at all. So this expression should be false. Maybe I'll just write that in a comment so I don't forget. And then this variable has fun. Let's see, is fun found over here? And it is, right? It's found inside of the longer word fund. So this one would evaluate to true. So now that I know the exact Boolean value stored inside of has zoo and has fun, that is false and true respectively, I begin to check this condition. And so we're checking if has zoo. And so I know that that is going to evaluate to false and has OK. Recall that has OK was that initial variable from up here. And I know that that was true, right? So, so I don't forget, should have said true over here. And so overall, I'm checking false and true, which I know overall evaluates to a false. So I don't enter this statement. Instead, I must check the rest of my condition. So I enter this one over here. And I know that this condition is going to be true because it was true up here. And so this should just print out rad over here. And because I've just chosen a branch, I don't bother checking this other code, right? So overall, the two things that this code should print out is eat and also rad. So let's run this code, be sure. And there we have it. So key thing I want you to take away from this example is don't be overwhelmed by a lot of code. What you really just have to do is slow yourself down and evaluate the code top down, right? If you understand the pieces that comprise a long program, then just by combining those small pieces of understanding, you can understand the entire thing altogether. And so let's go on to this snippet 2.2. It's much longer. And I'll comment out this code and bring this one in so we can stay focused. So hopefully you actually typed out these conditionals, right? Really practicing, typing that syntax, getting that muscle memory. But for now, let's uh, interpret this one. So I have a lot of stuff going on. Let's go through this step by step. And so I start at the top and I have a variable called Q. It's set to 25 and I check some if statement, right? So we have some patterns that you probably understand in isolation. So by now you should understand this pattern is checking, you know, if Q is divisible by three. In other words, I'm checking, is 25 divisible by three and is 25 divisible by five? Only the right-hand side is true, right? So overall, this expression says false and true. Because that's a false and true, I know that this total expression evaluates to false. So I must continue checking the next one. So here, it's really the same thing. I'm checking, is 25 divisible by three or is it divisible by five? I know that this left-hand side is going to be false, right? Because 25 is not divisible by three, but this right-hand side is going to be true because 25 is divisible by five. And so I have false or true. 
I know that the entire thing is going to evaluate to true, right? So I would hit this console.log of either. So I'll write that in a note. So this one runs. And then from there, uh, we go on to our next chain of conditional. So here I have another variable called r, and it checks is 9 divisible by 3 and is 9 divisible by 5. Only the left-hand side is true, and I'm trying to end things together, and so I don't enter this conditional. So I have to continue checking, and I check if 9 is divisible by 3 or 9 is divisible by 5, and only the left-hand side is going to be true. However, since I'm oring things, I know that the total expression uh, would evaluate to true. So this should just print out either once again. And we've already chosen which branch we enter in this chain. So I just go on to my next chain. So here I have s equal to 15. And I check some condition, right? Is 15 divisible by 3? And is 15 divisible by 5? And this is actually true, right? Because this side is true. And this side is true. And when I add true and true together, I get true. So that means I enter this expression over here and print out both. And that will be the final branch that I enter here. So overall, I'm looking forward to seeing either, either, and then both. So let's give that a run. Nice, and there we have it. So notice that this code looks pretty scary, but it's actually not that hard to evaluate. As you like read and write code more and more, you're really gonna be able to quickly pick up on what the patterns like mean. In other words, when I see code like this, I don't literally in my brain interpret it as like 25 mod three triple equals zero logical and. What I do is instead understand the meaning behind it, right? So when I see code like this, I literally in my mind say to myself, if Q is divisible by three and it's divisible by five, right? If I have the actual like meaning behind the code, then it helps me track all of this logic as I read it. So that was section two of this one. Let's go on to the last one, section three. And this one's gonna be kind of similar to what we've done uh, previously, but we wanna work in some conditionals, right? So my job here is to create a file called 3.js. And what I want to do is have this program print out string possibly, right? So it should print out found if the substring code with this like capital D exists in the text below. Then if this string is not found inside of the text, then my program should print not found. So let me set up my environment. And I'll just create this file. So inside of 3.js, I know I need to definitely utilize the long text that they want us to kind of search through. So I'll be sure to copy this text. It's pretty long. And through the beauty of programming, I can pretty quickly figure out if CODE is inside of this string, right? Using some JavaScript. So this will just be some, some practice. So I'll take that long string, here it is, pretty long, and I'll put it in quotes because I know it must be some valid uh, string data. And then from there, what I'll do is save that to a variable. So I'll say like, let my long string equal that. There I have it. And then I can always reference this variable uh, later on. Well, they tell me what I want to search for is this exact string, C-O-D-E with the capital D. So I'll take that as well. And let's think about any patterns we can use to figure that out. So I really just want to check if a string is inside of another string. Now, what I can do is just use that index of pattern, right? So nothing too fancy here. Let's go ahead and say long string. And if I do dot index of that code string, that'll tell me the index where this can be found in my long string. I know that that gives me back a index if it's found, right? So a number that's zero or greater. But if it's not found, I get back negative one. And of course, I'm just gonna leverage that pattern, right? So simply put, I'll check, hey, if the index of code inside of my long string, if that is valid, that is, if it's greater than negative one, then what I should do is just print out the string, literal string, found. So I'll do that, console.log found. And then besides that, if it's not found, that means I get back negative one as the index and I check is negative one greater than negative one. That's false, so I run this else statement, in which case I just wanna print out not found, right? So let's see what we get. Let's run this code, nothing too fancy. And there I see found, and where can I exactly find this? A uh, fun trick in VS Code, if you want to do this in like the non-programmatic way, just using like command find, what you can do is use command F or control F. You can actually search for some text, kind of like any other uh, word processor. Maybe you've used this shortcut before. So I'll look for code like this. And let's see where that is found. Oh, and there it is right over here. So it is indeed found uh, in my string. All right, programmers, that's all I got for the walkthrough for this exercise. 
what I definitely want you to do is make sure you can solve all of these problems on your own. In particular, really make sure you can read and predict how these if statements behave, right? It's really important, like I always say, as you're learning these concepts bit by bit to have like full ownership and full confidence in your ability to work with these things before we add in a new topic, right? So hold yourself accountable, redo these exercises if you have to, use the walkthrough if you need to. Then once you can do all of these on your own, then you should go to the next video.